Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of December 24th through 30th. Today is Monday, December 25th. So it is Christmas Day. I did not film again yesterday because editing the Vlogmas video took all day again. That being said, <laughs> my neighbors have been uh, doing some extra loud things over the last couple days. Um, my one side of my house is playing their music really, really loud, so I didn't want to get copyrighted. And then the other side neighbor just started working on his motorcycle. So if you hear something extra loud, that's what it is. But I wanted to come on and do my last advent openings with you. So I've got my yarn advents here, I've got my Vanessa advents here, and I've got my last Yankee candle here. So let's do the Yankee candle to get that out of the way first. So we have one window left to go because this is a 24 day. So let's see what we have on our last day. Oh, it's my favorite. It is Magical Frosted Forest, which we just so happen to be melting today in the house. So this is great. Okay, so let's do our yarn advents for the day. We've got our 30th resident here, so let's see who it is. It says the Over 400 Club. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Presumably gathering, as its name implies, several ghosts bonding over their great age, the Over 400 Club can often be found gathering at the banquet table in the Haunted Mansion's Great Hall. Among its members are Great Caesar's Ghost, the Crowned Ghost, and Roderick Kilroy, as well as several other spooks whose names and origins are considerably more unclear. The club is usually seen taking part in the birthday celebration of the birthday girl who does not appear to be a member. So that is the Over 400 Club. And let's see what the scheme looks like. Woohoo! Maybe we'll be ending the sweater in some dark blues. So again, we've got some nice navy colors with purples here in this tonal. I would call this probably a variegated though because these are very purple as opposed to blue. And we've got some really nice streaks of really light lavender. So that is gorgeous. Okay, so that's the Over 400 Club. And so let's see who our last resident is for our advent calendar. And we've got Master Gracie. Didn't we have him before? Or was it, uh, is he the descendant of? Or the other way around? Anyway. <laughs> Depicted in his changing portrait as a handsome young man, decaying into a mummified skeleton, Master Gracie was one of the inhabitants of the Gracie Manor in its golden age. Little is known about his life for certain. Most silent is the persistent rumor that he is the owner of the house and or the ghost host himself, a rumor the host has been all too happy to indulge in. I believe that's what it says. It got cut off at the bottom. So that is Master Gracie. And let's see what our final skein looks like. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It is a kind of plummy black. So that is excellent. There are just the slightest touches of gray in here but they're very, very slight. So this is gonna be our last color for the sweater. So once we get to this color, we'll see how long the sweater is and then make a game plan to go from there. But yes, very great color to end my sweater on. Okay, and finally, we've got my advent from my friend Vanessa. So here's yesterday's. So let's see what's inside. This is from my friend Vanessa over at the Crafty Planty Life podcast. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
Rose Girls Peppermint and Raindrops. So this is going to be awesome because I love peppermint and I love Rose Girls' raindrops. So let's take a smell. Oh, that is good. That is good. I'm so thankful for this. Thank you, Vanessa. I am going to enjoy this a lot. So that is peppermint and raindrops. And then our last packet looks like a skein of yarn. So let's see what's inside. It feels like a skein of yarn. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh that is so fun! Cat sandwich fibers. This is another dyer that I have seen quite a bit but have never purchased from yet. So that's awesome. Um, this colorway is called Merry and Bright. So it is a Christmas colorway this is in the trussel base. Uh, 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. Oh, that is going to be amazing. Definitely see some socks in my future. So that is so fun. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I am so thankful. And I'm so glad that we've gotten to know each other much better over the last year. And I really, really appreciate you. So thank you so much. So that is everything that we've got for the Advent openings. So I will continue to work on my Advent sweater. So you will see updates on that in future Deezus 19 Diaries as well as the end of this week's. Um, I will be planning for my phase out your TBR readathon round two sometime this week as well. And yeah, I'll definitely be updating you later in the week on my progress through what I had opened for my manga advent calendar project because I am still reading those selections. And yeah, so I'm off today and tomorrow I have a short work week this week like two days maybe three I might have to help out on Friday but we will see and so yeah I'm just going to relax for the day I think maybe get some video game time in some knitting time and just take it easy so I hope you're all having an amazing day whatever you are doing and I will catch you later. Hello everyone. It is Friday, December 29th, and I'm here to share with you my phase out your TBR round two readathon TBR. <laughs> I don't know why it was so hard for me to get that out, but yes. So phase out your TBR readathon is being hosted by Chris's Corner. They are doing a readathon every other month for each phase. So phase one happened in November. I am not done with my first phase. I'm still reading my last book for that phase, but I wanted to get my TBR done um, so that I knew what I needed to complete for my next phase. So it looks like we're gonna have about two months to complete each phase, which is great because I believe as the phases go, the phases get longer and longer and longer. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep up with this, but for now, we're going to go for it. So I have a new notepad for this year, a new notebook. This is actually an old notebook. I have had this notebook for years and I just have never used it uh, because it's so pretty. <laughs> So I decided that I needed a new notebook this year and I'm pretty much somebody who is not very creative and so I don't journal. I can't make pretty layouts or anything like that. I pretty much just write a bunch of notes. I am the type of person that needs to just write notes uh, real simple and so this is what I'm going to be using for this year whether it be for just bookish stuff or knitting also. Um, I'm not sure yet, but there's only one entry in here so far, and that's my phase out your TBR readathon round two uh, TBR prompts. So let's open this up because it is my first uh, 
page on this. It might be a little bit difficult to keep this open. So what I'm going to try to do is put this uh, bookmark here, which will hopefully add a little bit of weight. Yeah, no, it's not enough. Um, my geode tea light warmer. <laughs> okay, so I have a ribbon bookmark here that came with the notebook. So basically what I did was play a round of single person phase out, uh, phase 10 to figure out what I would be reading. So in the end, I ended up with three eights. So we needed a three of a kind and we needed a run. And so I ended up with what I put together as four, five, six, and seven. So for this round, I really tried to keep with the colors of the cards as well. Last round, I chose whatever colors I wanted just to keep things really simple. Um, I thought for the beginning of the year, we would do something a little bit more challenging. And so tried as hard as I could to keep with the colors. For the wilds, I am choosing whatever I want <laughs> for those numbers. So... I have taken the prompts and written them down. You can see here that I have left four open because I wasn't sure which of the prompts I wanted for that, but I have since decided that I'm going to go with pretty cover, which is four red. So let me just write that in here and pretty cover. So I'm not going to write the titles of the books, except I already have one here, and that's just because it is already on my Rotating Decks TBR, so I'm definitely reading that one. So let's just go through uh, what I have chosen for these prompts, and I will fill in the title as I read them. And so for Red 8, which is standalone, I decided to go with Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. Um, I've heard <laughs> not great things about this, but it is a short novella. Um, I believe this follows a group of people who go to a house or something for a bachelor party or something like that. It doesn't say on the back. They go to a mansion, and it's the perfect venue for a group of thrill-seeking friends brought back together to celebrate a wedding. A night of food, drinks, and games quickly spirals into a nightmare. Secrets get dragged out and relationships are tested. But the house has secrets, too. Lurking in the shadows is a ghost bride with a black smile and a hungry heart. And she gets lonely down there in the dirt. So... I actually had pretty high hopes for this one, but after hearing all of the negative <laughs> reviews on it, I'm a little bit apprehensive. But if now is not the best time to read this, then I don't know when is. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what I think about this one. And so this is going to be my standalone selection. Then, as you can see, Yellow 8 finish a series. So I'm going to go with Manner of Death, Volume 2, art by Yukari, Yukari Umemoto, and original story by Samon. This one is published by Yen Press, rated Mature, and it is the Yen Press. So it says, for language, nudity, sexual content, and violence. Um, this is the final volume in the duology. So you can see over here, it says final right there. Uh, this is the story about a medical examiner who gets called to the scene of a suspected suicide and as he looks at the crime scene he realizes that it is not a suicide but a homicide and as he's getting right uh ready to write up his report stating that fact he gets accosted in his own home and is told that if he does not write down that the cause of death was a suicide, bad things will happen to him and the people he cherishes in his life. And that just makes him more curious about the situation. And so he decides to look further into what exactly happened with that uh, scene that he was called to. 
So this is the final volume. It is a Thai BL story, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one all ends up. So I also mentioned earlier that this one was part of my rotating decks TBR as well, which is why I know that I will be reading this one. So that is what I'm reading for Finish the Series. For Book with a Map, I decided to go with Volume 1 of 86 in the light novel form. Uh, this is by Asato Asato, illustrations by Chirabi, and mechanical design by 1-4. Um, this one is published by Yen On and rated ages 16 and up, which is older teen. Uh, so this says, A War Without Casualties, the Republic of San Magnolia has long been under attack from the neighboring Giardian Empire's army of unmanned drones known as the Legion. After years of painstaking research, the Republic finally developed autonomous drones of their own, turning the one-sided struggle into a war without ca casualties, or at least that's what the government claims. In truth, there is no such thing as a bloodless war. Beyond the fortified walls protecting the 85 Republic territories lies the non-existent 86th sector. The young men and women of this forsaken land are branded the 86th, and stripped of their humanity, pilot the unmanned weapons into battle. So I thought this sounded very interesting, a little bit Hunger Games-ish with the uh, Republics. Uh, and I do have this one on audiobook. Um, so I'm really interested to see what I think of this series. It sounds interesting. And so I'm looking forward to this one. And so that is what I will be reading for Book with a Map and... If I uh, flip, see, there are some um, illustrations in the light novels. But if I flip to here, this says map. <laughs> it says the Republic of San Magnolia Eastern Front Rough Sketch Map. So it talks about the sectors. It's not what you normally call a map, but it says it's a map. So I'm going with that. And so that is what I'm reading for that one. For pretty cover, I chose volume three of Villains Are Destined to Die by Sewell, original story by Guan Gyo Ul. Um, this one is published by Issei Press, rated teen. So this is a story about our main character here who in real life really enjoys this otome game and then one day she gets transported into that otome game as the villain and so because she is very familiar with how the game works she tries her best to get out of the game by using her knowledge of how the story goes in the game so at first this story kind of starts off very much like an ultimate game would be played. You'd see the selection boxes pop up on the page and her choices that are available to her. But as she plays, she realizes that the way the gameplay is, is not to her benefit. So she decides to go off in a different direction. And I've been really enjoying uh, watching this story unfold. And I think the art in this Manhua is gorgeous, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what this volume has to offer as far as her relationships go with the characters, because in Otome games, you want to build your relationship with the characters to have them act more favorably for you, and that's definitely what she is doing. You definitely see that in this story as well. So really looking forward to more of this series. So that's pretty cover for Low Hopes. Um, I decided to go with volume two of Penguin and House. So this is by Akiho Ieda, uh, published by Kodansha, rated ages eight plus which is technically all ages. Um, this is a story about a penguin and his owner. So you can see the penguin here has a pile of pancakes. The penguin definitely does a lot for their owner, which includes cooking. Uh, the owner is this character here. I did not enjoy the owner. 
<laughs> we read volume one for uh, Mo the Monica Manga Club. And I did not enjoy the owner. I don't think he deserves this penguin. And as much as I love the penguin, I did not enjoy the story overall because it really follows how the owner treats the penguin. And I don't think the owner deserves his penguin. And so I have low hopes that uh, my feelings for the owner will turn around uh, with this volume. So... That is why I chose that for this prompt. I do think the penguin is very cute. I'm interested to see like more of what the penguin does in the day-to-day. -day, but like I said, the owner, I do not believe he deserves this cute penguin who does so much for him. And so, yeah, Low Hopes, Volume 2 of Penguin and House. Six Green was start a series, and so I chose one of the Monaco Manga Club selections for the month, and I went with Volume 1 of Obey Me the Comic, story and art by Subaru Nito, and original work by NTT Solmare. Uh, this one's published by Seven Seas and is rated Teen 13 Plus. So this says, as the underworld school bells ring, a little sheep wakes up at the Royal Academy of Diavolo in the Devildom, where seven eccentric demon brothers await. This woolly critter is actually a human exchange student, so how did they end up a sheep? Everything is a blank. Now the sheep must figure out how to turn back into a human and regain their memories as Lucifer and the other demons raise hell with devilish hijinks. So I think this is just going to be really, really fun. It's based on the hit mobile game, Oh Baby. And so, yes, really looking forward to getting into this one. I have seen a couple episodes of the anime, which are about five minute episodes. Um, I was interested enough. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what the story is all about. And then the last prompt is no people on the cover. And so I decided to go with Penguin and House Volume 3. <laughs> so you can see there are no people on the cover, but we do have our penguin. And unlike the previous volume, there are actually no people. So there are actual penguins on the back cover here. Um, and so, yeah, this will help me uh, complete a series earlier in the year. I'm not sure um, if I'm going to be able to complete all of these prompts in the month of January. I'm going to try, but we will see. Um, one of my kind of, I wouldn't say goals, because I'm not really making goals for the year, but I would say one of the things I'd like to do, as I normally do every year, is to complete series. And so this will definitely help me complete another series with uh, Manner of Death. So that'll be two series that I will hopefully be able to complete earlier in the year, which is awesome. The other awesome thing is that all of these things I have just showed you, I own. So that's great. We'll definitely be working through uh, owned items in my personal library. And that is great as well. So that is my TBR for the Phase Out Your Readathon Around 2, which again is being hosted by Chris's Corner. I will link the announcement video for the second round in the description box below in case you're interested in joining us. And so, yeah, that is everything that I have for today. I will see you again shortly <laughs> for my wrap up of the week. And so, yeah, I hope you're all having an amazing evening and I will chat with you later. Hi everyone, it is Saturday, December 30th, and I'm here to wrap up this diary entry. So I did finish a few things this week, so I'd like to share my thoughts with you on those things. I am DNFing something at the end of the year, so I will let you know about that as well. And then I'd like to share with you an update on my Residents of the Haunted Mansion sweater. So let's get into it. So I finished four volumes of manga all from my manga advent calendar project. And so I'm not going to be able to finish that project this year, but I do have, I think, six volumes left that I will be finishing in January. So I think that's a good number. And I'm not sad about it at all. 
I still think I did a really great job and I'm excited for the volumes that I still have left to read. So anyway, I finished Yakuza Fiance, a story and art by Asuka Konishi, uh, published by Seven Seas, rated older teen. So this is a series about these two characters here who are the grandkids of ya Yakuza, like bosses. <laughs> And they're friends. The, the grandfathers are friends with each other. And they had made an agreement to have their grandkids marry and to bring the families together. And so our female character ends up going to live with the ma male character's family in light of the betrothal. They're getting to know each other. And he is definitely different from how he presents himself, um, like in public. <laughs> And so she's starting to learn about that and they are learning about each other. And in the midst of all of this, there is a kidnapping of another person that is kind of from another Yakuza clan. And so they're kind of looking into it type of thing. And as they do that, they're learning more about each other's strengths. And I really, really enjoyed this volume. Um, it's definitely interesting seeing what's happening between these two because, like I said, they're betrothed. But at this point, it's still very early in them getting to know each other. There are definite things that are starting to happen uh, as far as, you know, feelings on both sides about how they feel about the other. Not necessarily romantic, but just like how they're feeling in general towards the other person that I'm finding interesting. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how like their relationship either grows or doesn't grow and how, I don't know, they start getting better communicating with each other. Uh, because at this point, they're still not really great at communicating with each other either. But that is kind of what makes this entertaining for me. Now, I hate miscommunication. But for me, that's not what's happening here. It's just that they don't know how to communicate with each other. Or they're not willing to communicate certain things with each other because they don't know each other very well. And so it's all part of that learning process, right? Um, there was another character that was introduced to us in this volume that I am very interested in. And so I'm hoping to see where things go with that, especially with what happens in the last few pages of this volume. So I am really looking forward to continuing this one. I gave this one four stars. Unfortunately, I do not have any more of this series on my shelves at the moment. Um, apparently when we were at the Barnes and Noble, my daughter was like, hey, they've got volumes three, four, and five. And for whatever reason, I told her, no, that's okay. Well, wait, I don't understand why I told her that because I did really enjoy volume one. So either I didn't hear her properly or I don't know, maybe it was that I just wasn't feeling well because, you know, at one time that I told you while we were at the Barnes and Noble, I got really, really sick and nauseous um, because it was so hot in the store. And so, I don't know, but I'm definitely going to be picking the rest of what's of this series is out um, as soon as I can. So really, really enjoyed this one. Definitely will be continuing. And then I read volumes 21 and 22 of Black Butler. So I did remember where we were at the last time I read a volume in this series, which was great because then I didn't have to go back and reread volumes. Um, I'm really, really enjoying this so far. Uh, we got a little bit more about the Earl Phantom Hive, who is uh, CL's father, who by the beginning of the series has passed away. And so we're kind of getting little bits of flashback here and there. And I'm just really, really enjoying uh, the story. And so, yeah. Glad to be back in this world. I know that I'm really, really behind on this series. And we definitely need to not only catch up to what is currently out as far as purchasing and reading, but also filling out the previous volumes that we had borrowed from the library and read that way. So we started collecting this one, I think, in 2020. I think when the library shut down, we were no longer able to access the volumes. 
we started purchasing them. And so I think from volume 18 or so, we started. And so, yeah, we've got about 17 volumes or so to purchase to fill in the front part of the series. But it is really, really enjoyable as a series. I'm not much into historicals, but there is enough like mystery and supernatural elements in this entire story that it really keeps my interest. And so I gave both of these four stars. Looking forward to continuing with the series. I think there's also an anime season coming out next year, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm really looking forward to watching that as well. And then last night I read What He Who Doesn't Believe in Fate Says, Volume 1, Story and Art by Omu the Rice. I forgot to tell you that Black Butler is by Yana Toboso, published by Yen Press, uh, rated Older Team. Um, published by Seven Seas, rated Teen. So this story is about um, our guy here on the cover. His name is Kosuke, and he can see the red string of fate. And this red string is basically a string that ties you to your, like, soulmate. And he, one day, suddenly is able to see it. Um, but he has feelings for this girl named Yuka, um, who he's known since university, but has never like said anything to her, but they're like really good friends. They go out drinking two times a week and they're very friendly with each other. But Yuka's kind of feeling down about the fact that she can't find a boyfriend. And so they're adults now, they're in the workforce and they still like, get together every couple times a week for drinks and they have, you know, friendly discussions and things like that. And Yuka's at the point now where she's like, I'm ready to, you know, find somebody. And Kosuke's not ready to tell her how he feels, but he sees that his her red string of fate doesn't lead to him. And so after Yuka, like, gets this idea in her head that she wants to find someone, she goes to see a fortune teller, and the fortune teller tells her that her intended is someone who's nearby her and she immediately thinks that it's Kosuke because he's with her at the time and he's kind of the one that you know she's kind of always with and so Kosuke knowing that her red string of fate doesn't lead to him lets her believe that it's him kind of but is kind of like wondering if he should like let her in on his feelings um, and kind of like, you know, to hell with this red string of fate that I'm going to make it work with Yuga and things like that. And so it's a really interesting concept. I'm wondering why he can see this red string of fate. Like, is it so that it's intended for him to know that he's supposed to be with somebody else? And like, what will happen if he pursues this relationship with Yuka and, you know, possibly ruins their relationship that they have currently? Or, you know, I don't want to say ruin somebody else's life because they're supposed to be with him. But, you know, something like that. Because there's so many things that could happen with this. And you can obviously see that he's, like, ready to cut that string, right? Because... His doesn't lead to Yuka, and Yuka's doesn't lead to him. On the other hand, could things change in the future so that their strings end up leading to each other? There's just so many things that could happen with the story. I'm very, very interested to see what's going to happen. Um, and at the end of this volume, you do see who their strings lead to, which I thought was very interesting. And so, yeah, knowing that information and things like that, I'm really curious to see where the story is going to go. So I really enjoyed the art style. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the relationship between Kosuke and Yuka. And I'm interested to see what's going to happen with them. So definitely we'll be continuing with this one. And I gave this one four stars as well. Um, I also read one more thing, which I finished last night. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that I needed to read something with the word fire in the title to finish my year in Eldia readathon for the Aurelia Magical Readathon. So it was the 
year-long reading challenge that kind of goes along with the Aurelia Magical Readathons that happen during the year. And so I've been working this entire year to get to this point so that I can have the ability to turn into a phoenix so that my character can have that ability. And so the last thing that I needed to do was to read something with a uh, fire in the title. And I could have gone with Fire Force Volume 2, but I kind of don't want to do that because I want to be able to read the entire series through once it's out um, in the omnibuses that I'm collecting. Um, I could have picked up Fire in His Fingertips, but that would be another series that I wasn't intending on purchasing um, and I don't currently own. But then I went to Hoopla and I started perusing all of the stuff they had there with the word fire in the title. And I ended up happening upon the art of Fire Emblem Awakening. And so Fire Emblem is a game franchise. Um, if you've seen some of my Desus 19 Diaries, you've seen some gameplay from when my daughter and I are playing Fire Emblem Warriors. Um, we've also played some Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes on our gaming channel, which we haven't touched in a really long time. But we'll hopefully get some more videos up on that channel um, sometime in 2024. But anyway, Fire Emblem is a franchise that my daughter enjoys. And so Fire Emblem's Awakening is a like turn-by-turn -turn base um type game and that type of gameplay is not my type of gameplay i much prefer the battle combat type of gameplay that the warriors uh, line has to offer but i thought okay some of the characters will be familiar to me and so i decided to go ahead and borrow the art of fire emblem warriors and so I'm not quite sure who this one is by. It's by a bunch of different people because you've got a bunch of different artists and things. Um, but it's published by Dark Horse. And it basically shows you character designs of the characters that are in the game. Shows you panel layouts on how they laid out the scenes before they animated them for the game. And then you get all of the like um, speech or conversation like texts from when like say the character is dying um when you level up your relationship with each character you get all of those texts so every possible uh route you could go with your character you got the text from that now because I'm not familiar with Fire Emblem Awakening, I only knew some of the characters because some of the characters from that game follow through to Fire Emblem Warriors. So like Krom and Marth, uh, Cordelia, um, Owain, and uh, Tharja, Robin, Lissa. I'm familiar with all of them because I've played them in Fire Emblem Warriors, but there was a whole host of other characters that I just was not familiar with, so it was interesting to see them. But I really, really enjoyed this. I've never, I don't think, read an art book before. Um, and so it was really interesting to see all of the different like steps and things, the layouts that they were doing, the speeches um, from all of the characters, like every possible situation um, was laid out for you and you could read it. Now, I will say that it was a little bit difficult to read because even if I like zoomed in so that the text was bigger, the scanning that they had done to make it digital or whatever they did, did not make it very crisp so the text and stuff was very like fuzzy around the edges it wasn't very sharp or clear so it made it a little bit difficult to read the conversations and things but it was still very interesting and I really enjoyed it so I ended up giving that one four stars I think if I saw that one like physically I would pick up a copy because I think my daughter would be interested in reading it but it is really hard to read because it's not crisp. The visuals are not crisp in the way that it was digitized. And so, 
yeah, I think my daughter may try to still read what's there um, just because I have it borrowed from Hoopla, so it is available to her. But I think if I saw a physical copy, I would probably pick it up because it was really, really nice and I enjoyed it. So I did also finish an audiobook this week. I finished the Borrow a Boyfriend Club book um, from Paige Powers. So I was listening to this one on audiobook and this one follows Noah who is trans. He's transferred into a new school and is looking for a club to like emit the message that he is a man. And none of the clubs, the sports clubs that he's looking for are really available at the time that he transfers into the school. So he's looking through the school roster and seeing what's available that would help out with the message that he is trying to send out into the universe. And he finds that the only club that could possibly do that for him is the football and Lamborghini club. And so... He says, well, what about this club? And he's told that there is a pretty rigorous like screening that he needs to go through and not everybody gets accepted into the club. But at this point, Noah just really wants to get into this club and says, okay, just let me know how to apply and I'll go through this process. So he goes and it ends up that this club is not the football and Lamborghini club. But it is the bar a boyfriend club. So basically this club offers the companionship of their members to borrowers. And so people can hire the people in the club for anything they need. If they need help with something or if they need a date to a dance or if they, you know, just need somebody to help them out with, I don't know, their studies or whatever. They're, they're like category categorized into different types. So you've got like a sporty type. You've got a popular type and things like that. And so Noah is just like, I have to get into this club. And is kind of put through the ringer trying to get into this club. And so we follow Noah going through the screening process to get accepted into this club. Now, the reason that I have picked up this book uh, is because I had heard that it was like Oran High School Host Club, um, the anime and manga by Bisco Hattori. Now, I've read Oran High School Host Club. I have also watched Oran High School Host Club, and it is one of my favorite series. Now, it is contemporary romance. <laughs> It is contemporary romance. But this is not like Oran High School Host Club at all. Um, I had heard about this because I was watching a YouTube video um, where people on the video were doing a video that said if Genshin Impact characters were band members and then categorizing them into all of the different um instruments. Now, I disagreed with a lot of the uh, categorizations that they made for the characters, but one of the people on those on that video was Christian Bannis. I think that's what his name is, and he is the voice of Toma. Well, he had said at the end of the video that he had just finished recording the audiobook for this book. And so I immediately went and got in line for it at the library and it was released to me this month in December. And he, I think he did a great job. I really, really enjoyed his narration. That being said, all of this, this is like Oran High School Host Club. It's not. It's not at all. The only thing that is even similar is the whole like secret club thing. Um, even the way that the Borrow a Boyfriend Club works is different from how Oran High School Host Club works. The way their organization is is completely different and the way that we're following the character becoming a member of the club is different. So this was a lot of 
like drama. There was a lot of drama. There was a lot of angst. Um, the main love interest in this book I didn't like at all, so that didn't help me either. So I did end up reading this book through entirety via audiobook. I enjoyed the narration, like I said. I believe the author is also a Genshin Impact player. Um, but this book was just okay for me. I didn't, I didn't find anything impressive about it. I would have much preferred if the story mainly focused on Noah and um, his journey as a trans man and all of the steps that were happening with that. So he is continuing to um, like change his name and do legal things and in this process. And we see how his family is kind of reacting to that, I guess you could say, without being spoilery. Uh, but I didn't like how his parents acted at all and how it was kind of wrapped up in the end about that whole situation was unsatisfactory to me. Unsatisfactory to me also. Uh, there was just more drama than it needed to be with the whole like relationship issue. And... Yeah, <laughs> it was just okay. And then, you know, because I was hearing all of this talk about, oh, this is Oran High School Host Club. Um, it's similar to Oran High School Host Club. And then me reading it through and it not being, but then reading the author's acknowledgments and saying that, you know, he is really appreciative of anime and manga and how it's, kind of helped him, but not specifically said anything about Oron even giving him an idea for this club. I, I just don't know if that's even a right comparison, because did he actually pull that idea from Oron or not? Because like I said, the club seems to be very different from Oron's. Um, the whole like premise is not even close to Oron. So the only real thing that's similar is that you've got a club of guys who hire out their companionship to uh, other female classmates or male classmates at that. And so, yeah, it's not like Oron where they were like hosting parties and doing all of these events. That's not what happens in this book. It is pretty much a, like need somebody to help you out need a date you can hire one of our members kind of thing and that's a way for the members to make a little bit more money and a way for you know some of the students at the school to get a date or get some help with something or you know whatever they needed their borrowed boyfriend to do so yeah um just not my type of thing I guess so I gave it three stars um, I'm glad that I was able to read it I thought it was entertaining like I said I thought the narrator did a good job I enjoyed listening to his voice um, but it was just an okay story for me I would have much preferred if we focused more on Noah and his transition and how um, he was like starting this life his life um, the way he wanted it to be, as opposed to this being so focused on kind of this romantic element. I do feel like a lot of the story got taken up by these like romantic like feelings kind of getting in the way of things, not only from Noah, but from his romantic interest, who I didn't care for. <laughs> so yeah, three stars. And I finished this one early in the week, so I needed to start another audiobook. And it just so happened that I had gotten released The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I have had this one on hold since late September, I believe, hoping that it would come in October for me to read then. It was a recommendation from one of my mom's co-workers when I asked for horror book recommendations this is one that was recommended to me and so I've been waiting for it to get released to me I have heard 
other people I know um, talk about this book and really enjoy it. And so I thought, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot. It definitely sounded like it was going to be right down my alley. Um, it's about a group of guys who basically did something they weren't supposed to do. And now years later, something is exacting its revenge. Um, at least that's kind of the gist that I'm, I'm getting. Now, that being said, I am going to DNF this book. I am at 27% of the way through at this point, and nothing about this book is grabbing my interest. There is a lot of animal, um, like, kind of gore. Uh, there are have been a couple of animal deaths in the book, and one of them being, uh, like, the killing of an animal, and... It's pretty detailed. I did not enjoy that. I did not enjoy that at all. I am not finding anything that I can attach myself to in regards to the characters. I'm not enjoying any of the characters. I'm not interested in any of the characters and what will come of them at this point of the book. There's just nothing grabbing me to the story. At this point where I am, I believe that we're starting to get into the revenge portion. But to me, it's not really like anything. Like, I don't know. I'm sure if I continue reading, things may ramp up. But for me, this atmospheric horror, which is what I'm kind of feeling at the moment, is not doing it for me. I'm not finding any enjoyment in it. I'm not finding anything that I want to explore more with this story. And I just came out of a scene where one of our characters was talking to the police. And it was a bad interaction. And I didn't enjoy that scene at all either. And so there's nothing really keeping me wanting to read this book. Now, I did read a little bit last night from the actual ebook because I also have an ebook copy from the library thinking that maybe it was just the audiobook that it wasn't grabbing my attention enough but I read through a couple of chapters last night and I was just just like no this is not grabbing me and so I'm going to go ahead and DNF it I don't want to bring a book that I'm not enjoying into the new year with me and one of the things that I really want to work on in 2024 is DNFing more, deciding earlier and being okay with letting go of books that I'm not enjoying. And I'm just not <laughs> enjoying this one. And so I don't want to bring it into the new year. And I think it's a good way for me to start to put that into practice, to be okay with letting go of something that I am not enjoying. So that's what I'm going to do. And I do think I gave it a good shot. I gave it 25%. I don't know how many pages that is. Well, actually 27. I don't know how many pages that is because this particular ebook copy only shows me locations. Uh, but my whole thing about DNFs is 25% or 100 pages. And I'm obviously over 25%. So I'm going to let it go. I don't know that I'll try anything else from Stephen Graham Jones because this is the second book that I tried this year from that author and I DNF the other one as well. So I don't know. Maybe Stephen Graham Jones is just not an author for me. I'm not particularly enjoying his writing style either. And so, yeah, kind of kind of sad <laughs> that that's how I'm ending my you know, last like diary entry for the year, but I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So that's where we're at with my reading. I will definitely be reading at least one more thing before the end of this year, but you're not going to see it until my first diary entry of 2024, which won't post until the 10th of January. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at with my reading. I do feel really good about my reading overall in the year. 
and how much I was able to read. I do intend on doing an end of the year like reading reflections with stats and all of that. I'm not doing any goals per se, but I will let you know what I'm thinking of in another video. So just know that. And so yeah, that pretty much wraps up my reading. And then let me show you where I am with my Residents of the Haunted Mansion sweater. I have not put in as much as I did the previous week, but I still did get a little bit of work in. So I am currently on the October 27th color, uh, which is this one. And I really can't tell. I mean, it looks really similar to the previous row, but you know what? I'm just going to go with it. So, so this is the front of my sweater. Here we go again, trying to like show you the sweater because it's really long at this moment. I am all the way down here. So you can see I can, I just put in one row of this color. Here's the back. And so I put in a little stitch marker. So I was here the last time I talked to you. So I put in five residents. I think I put in seven the last time I talked to you. Um, but yeah, that whole section is looking really, really nice. I would say that the bottom section of the sweater is probably my favorite at the moment. Um, I did go ahead and measure from the underarm to where I was yesterday. So I was up to here. And this is about 14 inches. So each like main color row and resident is one inch. And so with the remaining residents that I have, I should hit that 19 inches. Pretty perfect, I think, uh, before I start my ribbing. So I don't think I'll need to reuse any colors, which is great. And so, yeah, after that, I'll do the ribbing and then we'll go ahead and start on the sleeves and the sleeves will pretty, will match each row as it goes down. Now, I still haven't measured a sleeve on a sweater to see how long that my sleeve is going to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be as long as the sweater, though. I, I'm pretty sure that when I do sleeves, they're not as long as the sweater. But like I said, I do still need to measure that. But really loving this so far. It is looking amazing. And from far away, I think that looks great. Like, I don't know. This whole part kind of bothers me <laughs> because it just doesn't seem to fit. I mean, we've got such moody colors going through the rest of the body that the, um, the pastel -y part just kind of doesn't match. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But I'm still really, really enjoying the sweater. And I think it's going to look awesome. So that's where I am with that. Definitely a project that I want to continue to work on until I'm done with it. Uh, because it has been really enjoyable for me. It's also kind of rekindled my, my knitting mojo. And so, yeah, I did, however, tell my daughter that when I was done with the body of this sweater that I would cast her on another one. She is kind of more into wearing pullovers at the moment. And I've had yarn put aside for her for uh, just a plain like black sweater for a while. And so I think it's time to bring that out and cast that on for her. So. That'll be a project to cast on after I finish the body of this sweater. Um, and so that means after I put in all the residents, after I do the ribbing at the bottom and cast off. And so I'll cast on that sweater before I start on the sleeve over here. But I'm really, really loving this so far. And so, yeah. So that's everything that I have for this week. So by the time you see this... <laughs> It'll already be after the new year. So I hope you had an amazing first few days of the year. Let me know how your year ended up. 
um, what was your favorite book of the year and your least favorite book of the year I would really love to know I like I said I will be sharing my like end of year reading reflections in another video and we'll definitely let you guys know then um, what my highest and lowest rated reads of the year were and so yeah if nothing else and you'd just like to let me know that you were here if you could leave me some kind of celebratory emoji for the beginning of the new year that would be greatly appreciated and would really help me out and that will do it for me today so i hope you're all doing great i hope you're all safe and healthy and until next time take care and smile always bye